We're on the classes page in the components section. The client first clonable comes with zero components. And that's because components are based on your project, your design, your layouts, your pages. Components are for you to make. The client first clonable gives you the infrastructure. It gives you the mindset to go and build your components inside a neat and organized structure. So clonable is going to have the recommended three global class systems. It's going to have all of the other global classes that help you build. And then components are things that you build. So what we'll cover right now is how to name components so that you can keep your custom classes organized. Instead of just randomly creating custom classes, we have a strategy, we have a mindset for how to go and name your components. There's a full explanation inside the mindset in the components section, and this video is going to be a nice visual overview inside a real project. We're inside one of our project templates. Let's look at this home header component. Let's look at all the classes inside of the home header component that we can organize in our home header component name. Let me zoom in here first for you, and right away you're going to see we have home header component. Notice the underscore and notice this keyword. Our component naming is all about reusing the component name keyword. And in this case, it's home header. We're using home header because it gives us a lot of context into where and what this is doing. This is on the home page and it's the header of the home page. So if I find this class later on in the build somewhere else in another page, I'll know it's in the wrong spot. I'll know that this class is really meant for the home header. So let's go further into this. Let's see how we continue using this name, home header. And again, notice this underscore. In client first, the underscore is going to indicate that it is a component. We have home header content left. We have home header content right. I can zoom in one more for you. And if I continue to open this up, I'll just open up all of them here and we'll just read through this. You'll see a whole bunch of global classes and a whole bunch of home header component classes. So we have our outer page structure also with the home header. This is it section home header we're going to continue using this keyword throughout this section we have our page padding our content width our padding vertical and then we have our component and you can see the component is just the actual content inside this component it's the actual visual it's not the outer page structure it's not the outer padding it's the real content and maybe we can make this into a symbol that this is just the content. It's not the stuff on the outside. So we have our component and inside we have our content left and our content right. Inside content left, we actually don't even need any custom classes here. We have the bottom, margin bottom. We have our text. We have heading. We have more text. We went over this in the spacing section. And this is a really great example of just not needing custom classes for every element. But we do have our content left. This is really descriptive. It's telling us exactly what this is. It's on the home, in the header, and it's the content left. So you don't even need to look at a visual here. You know that the home header has a left side and a right side. And that the left side has some text on it. Right. Now we have our home header image wrapper. Okay, so the right has an image and inside there is an image inside that wrapper. And then we have home header contact. We have our margin top, margin top with some text. So we can pretty much understand what's going on here without actually looking at this visual. We have this home header recurring class name with the component underscore, and then a really simple identifier to then further identify what it is in this section that it is being created for. So 
Let's go and look at another one of these and notice how this one is home about. We are using the home word here because this is just not recurring elsewhere on the site. This is specific to the home page, so we can call it the home about. Let's go up one more probably to the component and we have our home about component inside our home about content and our home about gallery. Again, using this underscore really beautiful organization here and all of these classes we know are being created in our build specifically for the home about component. Wonderful. So if I just keep opening these up, I know where these are from. If I find this class somewhere else or I want to reuse this class somewhere and I want to try to merge it into some other name, I know this class is on the home about. So this is the power of component naming in client first, that when we create a, a custom class that is created to generate some visual component, we can put it into this component naming. Awesome. Another really powerful part about this is maybe I'm continuing to build this section. Maybe I want to try to recreate this on a different page or a different section and then rename it. Let's look at what this does in terms of our keyword searches. If I go home about, I have now returned a list of every class that has to do with our home about. Or maybe I want my home header. Great, I have now returned a list of everything that I need for my home header. This is every single class that is being created, that exists because of the home header. Awesome. Let's also look at this reuse of keywords. Let's go up to our home header component. And remember, not every single thing inside a component needs to be a custom class for home header. So these happen to be outside, but let's just say we move them inside just for this example. This is a custom class that just doesn't fit into the component because we want to keep it more global or more reusable for whatever reason. So this right here is really specific to the home header. We're not going to reuse this elsewhere, but the blur shape, the circle shape, maybe we see this throughout the build. Maybe it's on other pages and other sections, and that's okay. So we have our blur shape, and if we want to further customize it for the home header, we can put an add-on class, combo class, of is home header. Circle shape is home header. So this is a way that we can create custom classes, not necessarily have them inside of our components, but still, if we want to customize it further for the component, we can just reuse this class name, this keyword, sorry, Re reuse the home header keyword. So this is a nice overview of components. We have a lot more examples of this. Please go in here. You can see other examples of this pricing. We have even layout. You know, sometimes you don't have a specific class, uh, a specific page name, let's say, or a specific section name. Maybe you are creating more general sections. You can do layout one. You can do pricing one. Just make sure that you are giving the right keyword to organize all of the classes that are coming together inside elements to create something bigger. So this is a great example. Continue looking into this. Go ahead and download, uh, clone our Clonables, our templates, our wireframes, the component naming is all over those. So you'll see tons and tons of examples.